Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about why a modernized Iowa-class battleship would be less effective in a World War II setting. So this is a question that I've, I've now heard from a couple of people. Well, what if the Iowa class had just been built in their final form with missiles and radars and whatnot and uh, in World War II, would they have turned the tide of the war? Or uh, what if we have a final countdown situation? What if an Iowa class battleship in the 1980s gets sent back to World War II? If you guys haven't seen the movie The Final Countdown, you really got it. It's my favorite movie of all time. Uh, the aircraft carrier Nimitz gets sent back from 1981 to 1941, and the, uh, Kirk Douglas has to decide if he and Martin Sheen are going to stop the attack on Pearl Harbor or if they're going to let history happen as it should have. Really great movie. Uh, favorite line of all times from a movie, Splash the Zero. Like, go watch it if you haven't. If you haven't, it's been a couple of years, go watch it also. So, would an Iowa-class battleship, would New Jersey, in her current configuration, have made a difference in World War II? And uh, the short answer is, I don't think she would have. The Iowa-class battleships uh, are undoubtedly better as modernized, with their missile capabilities and their electronic countermeasures and their new fuel and everything else, they gain a significant number of capabilities uh, that makes them the equivalent of any other surface warship during the Cold War. But it would not make it a better warship in World War II. And that certainly doesn't mean that if in the 1980s a base Iowa and an upgraded Iowa fought each other, the World War II Iowa would win. No, but if you pulled this modern ship back in time 40 years, she would no longer be as effective. So, here are a couple of things that uh, modern technology would not uh, help her with in World War II. So first off, she has less anti-aircraft capability. Four of the twin five-inch mounts have been removed, so she's got less of that anti-aircraft capability. Uh, all of her 40 millimeters are gone, all of her 20 millimeters are gone. Substitute in the phalanx, and the phalanx would be absolutely deadly against propeller planes, but there were only four of those mounts. Each one has about 15 seconds worth of ammunition before it needs to be reloaded over approximately a 15 minute period of time. So a mass air attack is going to be able to easily penetrate the long-range flak barrage, which is being made up of six barrels of 5-inch ammo. Uh, and then there is no intermediate range like the 40 millimeter did at four or five miles. So now they're able to close to within two miles before the phalanx starts engaging them. The phalanx will, will do some work, sure, but once it's out of ammo, the rest of that strike comes through and, and is basically undeterred. Now, an Iowa-class battleship, especially early war, does have the VT fuse, so her 5-inch ammo will be as deadly as it was by the end of the war. Um, and in the 1980s, we do still have that sort of ammo, so it can be resupplied. Now, if, uh, say, the ship pops back in time and she goes to Pearl Harbor and they're able to drop a bunch of new mounts on board, great. Keep in mind that early war... Um, there, there were not enough any aircraft mounts to go around, so some ships go into combat without any. For example, Arizona has destroyed a Pearl Harbor with gun tubs for four intermediate guns, but no actual guns installed. Also keep in mind that uh, the development of the weapon systems, like the 16-inch guns and the 5-inch uh, guns, really stops after the 1950s. So New Jersey's technology in the 80s for those systems, the ones that can be maintained in the 40s easily, might be a little bit better than what's there, but it's not going to be significantly more advanced. Uh, her, her capabilities, her fire control and whatnot, uh, it is not significantly better in the 80s. So in subtracting all of those earlier anti-aircraft systems, they've added some really deadly state-of-the-art missile systems. For example, the Tomahawk cruise missiles here. We've got electronic countermeasures to block missiles over there. 
We've got Harpoon anti-ship missiles over there. These are some really devastating systems that nobody has any defense against in World War II, except uh, we, we've only got what's on the ship. You, you've got the 16 Harpoons, you've got the 32 Tomahawks, and that is it. So, once you have fired them, you're out. You may be able to engage targets with uh, your Harpoons and your Sea Attack Tomahawks. They've got ranges far in excess of both our guns and the guns of anything else uh, that's around at the time, especially anything that our enemies have. However, we have to be able to detect a target at long range. And in the 1940s, we don't have the satellites that are seeing those targets for us to get information from. And we don't have the systems like Link 11 or uh, JOTS or POST or any of these sorts of systems that are available here in CEC to detect what other assets have seen and get that information transmitted back so we can program our weapons with it. Now, presumably, you know, a PBY spots the Japanese carriers at Midway and radios back that they're at this heading at this. We, we might be able to program some missiles to go there and, and uh, get some reasonable hits. Those ships would not be defenseless. Their AAA may well be able to shoot down some of the missiles that come in. So we might be able to destroy a couple of ships quickly with our missiles. A couple of others might survive because these missiles are not armor-piercing and because uh, their anti-aircraft batteries are able to shoot down these missiles. And then we've lost all that capability. It's gone. Well, who cares about ship-to-ship -ship action? The battleship is nuclear-capable. What if she goes back in time with nuclear-tipped tomahawks? We can easily uh, end the war. We, we drop a nuke on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and that's it, right? That's how the, the real war ended. Remember that Japan was severely beat down by the time that uh, those atomic bombs were dropped. And even then, there were days of debate about whether they should surrender or whether they should keep tanking hits like that that were destroying cities. And uh, so in 1941, 1942, uh, even arguably 1944, mid-1945, dropping a couple of the nuclear warheads that we may or may not have even been carrying would not make the enemy surrender. But I don't think we could have hit their cities with those missiles anyway. The land attack tomahawks have special guidance packages that are stored in safes up on the ship. Those guidance packages are programmed ashore. It is GPS data that shows the path that the missile will take. The missile has a, a downward looking camera essentially that can make sure that it is flying along the GPS mapped route to get to the target. And that's how it finds its own waypoints and gets there. Well, we don't have GPS. We don't have the ability to program those uh, guidance packages. We've got whatever guidance packages were on the ship when uh, the ship teleports back in time. Is this the Gulf War? Is our guidance package for some cities in British occupied colony of Iraq? Are those guidance packages for cities in the Soviet Union, who is our ally at this point? It does us no good. Our land attack tomahawks, our nuclear uh, tomahawks are probably useless when we go back in time. Our sea attack ones can be programmed on board. You're, you're essentially programming uh, waypoints for them to go to. Uh, but again, they can engage a target over 200 miles out but we can't necessarily detect that target and get the information we need to program that that far out. We might have to get significantly closer and thus cut its effectiveness until we fired off all those missiles, which, which isn't that many of them at the end of the day. So the sustainment of missiles is one thing. What about sustainment of the ship? We've already talked about, you know, we can uh, get uh, 16 inch ammunition, we can get 5 inch ammunition, we can probably get phalanx ammo. Uh, if we go back to port, we might even be able to get extra weapon systems like we would have carried in World War II retrofitted back on, uh, which essentially turns us back into a World War II Iowa class battleship. Like none, none of the uh, extra capabilities of the 80s. But what about being able to sail around? In the 1980s, the Navy changes the type of fuel that the Iowas burn. Now, originally, she's burning the old uh, bunker fuel. It, it's basically 
one step up from unrefined crude. Because of that, it's so thick that you have to preheat it with steam radiators in the fuel tanks to get it liquid enough to be able to pump it into the boilers and actually uh, make the steam to move the ship. In the 1980s, they switched to essentially marine diesel, and uh, that's what the rest of the fleet is using. We're very important as a fleet oiler for our escorts. The reason they're using Bunker C and other uh, crude oils like that during World War II is because you can get it anywhere. Forward deployed, you don't have to refine it that much. Uh, it, it's relatively easy to get all over the world, which is a good thing because we're burning 2.4 million gallons of it a month under economical peacetime cruising. Uh, they, being able to get the type of fuel that we would have burned in the 80s is not impossible, but it is more difficult. It is less readily available. And, oh, well, she once burned Bunker C. Why don't you just put that back in there? No can do, friend. When they switch over to the modern uh, diesel, they remove the steam radiators. So we could pump that fuel into the tank, but then it's so thick that we cannot pump it out of the tank into the boilers. Unless you go through and you do a major uh, restoration, you go into all the tanks and you restore those steam radiators. And, and again, now you're just returning her to her World War II configuration. She, she's lost all the, the benefits of extra capacity and whatnot that she had because of the lighter fuel and the uh, radiators not being in there to take up space anymore. So for those reasons, an Iowa-class battleship in her final configuration would be less effective in a World War II situation than an actual uh, Iowa class as designed. The, the one major way that an Iowa class battleship could impact the war effort doesn't even necessarily require an Iowa class battleship. You could easily do this with uh, any modern ship that goes back in time. Uh, Iowa class battleships have multiple libraries on board both with technical publications for their more modern weapon systems that may help, may help, depending on the generation of the system, uh, to recreate that technology in a 1940s situation. Uh, like I said, the guns get some modifications in the 1950s. We can probably recreate that back from what's on this ship so that our gun technology, the VT fuse, is available several years earlier. The, the uh, newer radars for the five-inch guns are available several years earlier. Uh, great, that might help reduce the war effort. Uh, and maybe even more importantly, the ship has a 6,000 volume uh, library of just reading material for the crew. Some of those books are history books, and some of those crew have an interest in history and know the major events of World War II. So potentially, by having these sailors and these history books on board the ship, it may lead to the Allies fighting the war more efficiently. Of course, as soon as you change one thing, the history is completely changed and, and the enemy starts changing their plans and, and those books are good for nothing. So, who knows? So what do you think? Do you agree with me that a modernized battleship in World War II would not make a difference? Let us know in the comment section down below. Um, or do you disagree? Let, let me know how you think an Iowa might be able to change the course of the war. If an Iowa can't change the course of the war, do you think another ship could? Do you think Nimitz, time traveling back in time, uh, would be able to fare better than an Iowa class? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.